In this lesson, let's jump into texture painting in Blender. To show where the tools are, let's just start with the default scene here. In order to get started texture painting, we just have to switch from object mode to texture paint mode. So we can either do that with control tab and use the pie menu, or we can go to object mode and texture paint. If you're going to be switching between texture paint mode and object mode quite a bit, then I'd recommend enabling tab for pie menu in your user preferences. I'd like to use that going forward. So I'll go to edit and preferences, go down to key map and turn on tab for pie menu and save your preferences if they don't auto save. And then in the 3D view, we can just hit tab and swipe to the top right for texture paint and left for object mode. And that way I can change between them much more quickly. So now we're in texture paint mode, but our object is just this bright purple. And that's giving us a little indicator that there are missing textures or there's no actual texture to paint on. And if we left click and drag to try to start painting on our model here, then we're going to get a warning at the bottom saying missing textures detected. So the way that we fix this is to actually assign a texture to paint on. We do that in the texture slots up here at the top right. You can think of a texture slot as just a image texture in the shader editor. And if we go ahead and click the plus button here, we can add a base color texture, a specular roughness, or any of our other PBR maps. Now this is if the mode is set to material. If we set it to single image, then we can just choose an image from the dropdown list here or create a new one or open one up. And then no matter what, even if the image is not even part of our material whatsoever, we can still paint on it. But for now, let's assume we're doing the general PBR workflow and we can set this to material. So let's click the plus button here to create a new texture and I'll just choose base color. All of the default settings here are fine, so I'll click OK. Now we can start painting on our texture. If we just left click and drag on our cube here, then we can paint whatever we'd like. I'll hit Ctrl Z to undo that. And now let's look at some of the basic settings. The first is the color. That's just over here in the top left. We can change this to whatever we'd like. We can make it a nice blue. We can make it a yellow and of course anything in between. Next to that, we have the blend mode. So just like we had different blend modes in the shader editor when we were mixing different colors together, we can do the same thing here. So by default, it's set to mix, which is just laying one color on top of the other. But we could also set this to multiply. And then as we paint, we'll get the same result as if we had multiplied the two colors in the shader editor. We have all of our normal options here, as well as two extras that we don't get anywhere else in Blender, and that's Erase Alpha and Add Alpha. Because of course, if we set the alpha of our brush, that just means we're painting less on the surface, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the transparency of the texture itself. So let me just set this back to white by turning the saturation down. And then I'll set this to Erase Alpha. And if I left click and drag to paint on the model, you can see I'm actually cutting away at it and removing the alpha. If I want to add that alpha back in, then I just need to switch the blend mode to add alpha. And so this is how we would manage not just the color of the texture, but also the transparency. Next to that, we can set the radius of the brush. I'll set our blend mode back to mix. Right next to the radius setting is this icon for a pen and some circles coming out of it. And that's the icon for pressure sensitivity. So anytime you see that in Blender, that's how you would enable pressure sensitivity for that setting. So I'll go ahead and click that on and then I'll switch over to my Wacom tablet. If you want to know more about tablets and if you need one or not, I'll link an article down below that we've written before. But now with pressure sensitivity turned on, if I touch just a little bit, actually let's go to a, a darker color here so we can see it more clearly. If I touch just a little bit, and we get a really small line. And as I increase pressure, we'll get a much larger line. Now pressure sensitivity is automatically enabled for strength and that's going to change the opacity. So I'll turn this off for radius. And now if I do this with strength, you'll see that if I touch just a little bit very lightly, we'll get a tiny amount of that color. And then if I press down a lot harder, then eventually we'll get all the way to 100% and it can blend smoothly in between. So pressure sensitivity works quite well in Blender and it acts just like you'd expect in most other painting apps. The hotkeys for radius and strength are really, really helpful and something I definitely recommend memorizing. The first one is F for the radius. I'm not exactly sure why it's F as it doesn't stand for anything that I can think of. However, it's a common hotkey throughout all of Blender. So anytime you're working with a brush, whether that's in sculpt mode, vertex paint mode, any type of painting or stroke based manipulation, you can use F to change the brush size. So practice doing that for a second. 
And then you can also use Shift F to change the strength. So move your cursor over to the left to decrease the strength. I'll hit F to scale this up a little bit so we can see it more. And now we can see that the maximum pressure sensitivity is capped at uh, whatever that was at you know, 0.2 or something. And then if you bring your cursor over to the right, that'll increase the strength. You can also get all these controls simply by right clicking. Here we have the color, the blend mode, the radius, and the strength. We also have these two additional icons, which we'll talk about more later, but that just means that if we switch brushes, these settings will remain the same no matter which brush we're using. The last basic setting that you're probably going to want to look for if you're familiar with other painting applications is hardness. Now, there is no hardness slider in Blender, at least at the moment, but we do have a falloff curve. So it can be a little bit overcomplicated if you're used to just a basic slider. However, it's also much more powerful depending on how you use it. Right now, you'll notice that the edge of my brush is very soft. And let me actually go back to painting with my mouse so you can see it at 100% opacity. You'll notice that if I just click one time, then we get this gradual fade out along the edges. However, I can change that with my falloff. So I can go over to the falloff popover up here at the top of the 3D view, and I can choose between any one of these presets or adjust this curve. So if I set this to, let's say, smooth, then there's not really any other options there. It'll just be a smooth falloff. And you can switch between any one of these, or you could leave it at custom and switch between them here at the bottom. So you can see the smooth, which is the default here on the left. Then there's the sphere. And this curve represents the center of the brush over on the left and the outside over here along the right. And so if we click, then you'll see that it starts out very gradual and then becomes a very sharp transition at the end. And we can choose any one of these settings. This one you can imagine is going to be a very sharp transition at the center, and then it will ease out towards the sides. And that's exactly what we get. Then we have a linear one and also a constant one. So this one will just have no fall off whatsoever. I would definitely recommend trying out all of these for yourself if you're not used to working with them. I'll go back to our default here just by clicking this one on the left, set it too smooth, and then you could also manipulate the points if you really wanted to. And you could make, you know, whatever crazy shape that you want, and then your brush will reflect that. But for now, I'll just go back to our default here, which has a nice ease in and ease out. Now we could go on painting our cube here, but it's not exactly obvious which texture we're painting on and how we're managing our different textures. Of course, we can go over to our texture slots up here on the top right, but it'd be nice to be able to see our texture in a 2D view as well, as well as how it connects to our material. So instead of doing this in the layout workspace, let's actually do our texture painting in the texture painting workspace. So what I'll do here is just hit tab and go back to object mode for our layout view here, and you'll notice that our texture has disappeared. That's because in object mode, our solid shaded view is just set to a solid color. However, we can change that if you want to, just by going to the solid shaded view options and going down to texture. But for the layout workspace, I'll set this back to material. And now let's go over to the texture painting workspace up here at the top. Once we click on that, then we can actually see our texture over here on the left. And we can paint in the 2D view as well as in the 3D view. We have all of our tool settings at the top of our image editor here, as well as the top of our 3D view, and also over here on the right in the tool properties. So you can change them wherever it's most convenient for you, but if you change them in one place, it will also change them in all of the others. So generally what I do for the texture painting workspace is just right click on the header, go to header, and uncheck show tool settings. I'll do the same thing in the image editor here as well, header and show tool settings. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But that way I can just focus on the tool properties over here on the right in the properties editor, which again is just this top tab with the screwdriver and the wrench, and I can access all of those same settings here. This also makes it a little bit more clear which texture we're working with, and to show that I'm going to add another texture as well. So right now we have our base color, and let's actually look at that in our shader editor as well. I like to have our shader editor open as I'm texture painting so that I can see how the images actually connect to my material. So in the image editor here over on the left, I'm going to go to the bottom corner and left click and drag upwards to split the view. Then I'll set this bottom one to be the shader editor. Then I'll hit N to hide the sidebar. And now you can see that we have this image connected to our base color. If I were to create a new texture in the texture slots here, I can just click the plus button and let's go for a roughness texture. All of the default settings are fine for this example. So let's click OK. And now it's added that image over here on the left. 
Now we don't see that immediately updated in the image editor. However, we can just select it over here in the texture slots list and that will jump to it. So we can select any one of these images and it'll switch between them. One reason that I like to work like this is that I can have our 3D view set to be the material preview or the rendered view. So let me go over to the material preview shading and then I can also disable our gizmos and our overlays. So now I'm just seeing our object and our brush. This is showing me the final material result, whereas the image editor over on the left is just showing the single image. So now I can paint some roughness here. Let's say I set it to black, so it'll be a very low roughness. And let me just paint a little bit on the side here. Just do some basic scribbles. So we're not seeing any changes in the base color. However, we are, if we look at this from the side, changing the roughness. There we go. If we look at it from that angle, it becomes much more obvious. And we can change, you know, the color here. Let's bring it up a little bit. You know, we can start to blend it over on the right. But this is a good way to just paint on our roughness. If we wanted to see just the texture itself, then we could switch back to solid shaded view. And then whenever we want to see the result, then we can go back to our material preview. It doesn't matter whether you paint in the 3D viewport or in the image editor, they'll both do the exact same thing. It's just whichever one is most convenient for you. It will only update one of them in real time though, and then whenever you let go of your brush, then it will update the other, just to save on some memory. And then again, changing the tool in one of them will change it in the other as well. Seeing our brush settings in the properties editor makes a couple other options a little bit more clear as well. For example, under the color picker, we can see that we actually have two colors that we can work with. I'll set the first one to be, let's say, a light blue. And then to switch between the two, we can just click this switch button. Or we could use the hotkey X, which should be pretty familiar for you already if you're used to painting in Photoshop or Krita or GIMP. So I can paint with my blue here. And actually, let's be painting on the base color instead of the roughness. So let me go back to my base color layer here. And then I can go ahead and paint my blue and then just hit X and it'll switch to the secondary color. And then I can hit X again and it'll switch back to blue. If you'd like to save a color for later, you can save it in your color palette. So under the color picker, there's the color palette and you can just click new to create a new one and then click the plus button to add this color to the palette. So you can add as many colors as you'd like and that way you can save them for later. To use it, just click on the color. The other hotkey that I find really helpful for painting here, especially blending between colors, is the S hotkey to sample a color. So let's say on this side of the cube, I want to blend between blue on the right. I'll just paint some blue over here. Actually, I can just increase my brush size. There we go. And then let's say I want to blend to some orange on the left. Okay, so I have these two colors and I'd like to blend between the two. Well, what I can do is hit Shift F again to decrease the strength of my brush. So it's very, very weak. And just kind of start blending over here to bring the orange more into the blue. But then what I can do is hover over the blue and hit S to sample the color and then start blending in this direction. And then I can choose a color that's right in the middle. Let's say right over here, hit S to sample that blended color. That's neither of those colors, but somewhere in between and just start blending like so. And then you might want to hit Shift F and decrease that strength again and just continue going uh, more and more fine tune on the details here. But that's one way that you can blend between multiple colors. And again, the hotkey for sampling a color is S. All right, I think I've thrown enough at you already for one lesson. However, one thing that I want to be clear on before we jump on to the next video is the difference between the image editor and the UV editor, because we can see our UVs here because again, our cube is unwrapped, but we can turn that off by turning off the overlays in the image editor. If we go to hit tab in the 3D viewport and go to edit mode, we can't actually edit our UVs here, even though we can see them. In order to do that, we actually have to go to the UV editor over here at the top left. So we switch from the image editor to the UV editor. And now if we hit tab to go into edit mode, then we can change our UVs around. But in order to paint on something, then we have to switch to the image editor. And the image editor has a couple different modes, and I'm not entirely sure why the image editor has been split from the UV editor. It seems like they could just be modes in one editor, but I digress. 
By default, the image editor is probably set to view if you switch to it, but then you can also set it to paint mode or to mask mode, which is another mode that's more for visual effects, which is a topic for another day. So for now, just make sure that that's set to paint mode and that you're in the image editor, and then you can paint in a 2D view as well. Before you move on to the next lesson, practice switching in and out of texture paint mode. Try just scribbling on whatever primitive object that you have or any object that has UVs already. Try adding some new textures through the texture slots, changing the brush color, the brush size, maybe messing with the color palette, and all of those basic things. Once you feel like you've gotten the hang of it, then let's move on to the next lesson.